What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Keep It Hoop YouTube channel. So I wanted to do a video on just breaking down specific moves, like specific plays, like just not even plays, just moves in general. Just go into them in detail. And I wanted to just start a series. And today I know it's not specifically a move, but I wanted to do a breakdown on LeBron James's free throw and his free throw routine and his form. And this is by no means a knock to LeBron, right? Every player has their faults, and for LeBron, it happens to be his free throw. And it's not even a, a huge liability, but it is something that has held him back at times. Now, you know, he went from shooting 75 to 78% earlier in his career to being as bad as 70 or 66 two years ago, 69 last year, 71 this year. So it is something he can work on. And not to say that he hasn't put time into it, because I'm sure he's put countless hours into it in the offseason. But I, just looking at these, these tapes, I, I did see some easy fixes um some things he can just change and 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 improve his free throw shooting um before we get started if you could like subscribe share and comment mean a lot we have been getting a lot more subscribers recently so i do appreciate it and yeah do follow us on our social media page as well it is keep underscore eight underscore hoop on instagram and it is keep it hoop blog on twitter but with that out the way let's get started so right off the bat if you look at lebron james's foot positioning i find it a little bit weird now it's nothing that's too bad um, but it is something he can fix. Uh, his right foot right here is a little bit in an open stance um, towards the right side. And his left is super opened up. So it creates a little bit of a weird stance. Again, it's nothing too bad. And I don't think it's, uh, you know, the thing holding him back. But something that's pretty easily fixable. Doesn't go too low on his free throw. He's a guy that creates enough power um, from his upper body. So I get that. But you see here, as he goes up, one he kind of puts the ball behind him a little bit and i know certain players do that with their jump shot but if you look at all the good jump shooters guys like steph guys like dame their shot is pretty fluid it's one motion right so when your body's going down uh, to create the energy from your lower body ball dips right and then as you go up so is the ball and as you're on your tiptoe as soon as you're on your tiptoe, you want to be releasing the ball because you don't want to have a situation where sometimes if you're bringing the ball behind your head a little bit, you're already going to be at the tiptoe. And while your body's at the apex, your hand placement or the ball, you're just not ready to shoot it yet. And you want to keep your body movement. This is true for a lot of sports, but especially in shooting, you want to keep it as compact and as minimal as possible because you're talking about an NBA game, even I mean, regardless of level, really, but a, a, a full speed game. And there's just so many variables that goes into shooting, whether it's at the free throw line, mid range, three point line, fadeaways, all kinds of these shots. Right. So you want to keep your shot as minimal as possible because you there's just so many variables and you want to be able to rely on your shot to be able to have the same kind of release, same form every single time. And when you're putting little movements here and there whether it's moving the ball back or holding the ball at the top like lebron does a little bit it, it just it's just an added chance for something to go wrong with your shot right and then when you're talking about again not at the free throw line but even jump shots you're going to be tired guys are going to be pushing you sometimes you're stepping back you may be off balance there's just so many variables that again you want to keep your shot compact and minimal so if you look again here at lebron's shot right so we let this run goes backwards a little bit and his foot is already at the tiptoe a little bit, right? Like let's see his foot's this is where he should be releasing. Like the ball should already be coming out of his hands, but when he's releasing it, he's already on his way down. So he's already a little bit off balance and misaligned there, right? So that you don't want that. And then another thing you see here, and I know this is something that a lot of people have pointed out with his jump shot before, something a lot of people have impersonated, but he's leaning backwards, right? And it's not a crazy lean, like he's not fading away on his on his free throws, but still, again, like I said, you want to just keep everything compact, straight, and minimal, and him leaning back here, it doesn't seem like a crazy amount of lean, and it doesn't seem like it's going to impact your shot too much, but in the grand scheme of things, like in a... In a, in a environment like this that can make the difference right he shot i remember it was 2017 2018 he shot around 48 percent in crunch time free throws these things matter because a lot of times you revert back to what's natural to you and that's been his natural shot a lot of a lot of his career that kind of fading backwards over his head letting it go right so 
you know, when you look at that again in late game situations, it's 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 breaking down a bit and it's just not a natural movement for an ideal shot. And it's natural to him, and that's why he, he reverts to it, and that's why he does it. But you know, again, the misalignment that you create when you put the ball back, put the ball back, and then that little slight pause. So sometimes he's shooting on the way down, and then the little lean back. Um, I know it's a shorter video because um, that's really it. But again, you, you, I was able to point out just by looking at film, and, and you don't have to be a shot coach or or a basketball savant to to point this out, right? So if you guys are a younger player or just a player trying to improve, watching games is is really good. But also, just like if you want to break down film. You can just slow down specific plays. You can just break down a specific move. You can just go to YouTube, put the playback speed to 0.25 or 0.5. You can learn a lot from a lot of these clips where it's, it doesn't even have to be a highlight, right? You just look at a play and then you slow it down. There's just so much going on in NBA court. You look at the hand placement, uh, where, what the players are doing with their off ball or offhand, their footwork. A lot of times you just watch what, what the guy without the ball is doing and you watch what the defense is doing. You can learn a lot. But yeah, I, I want to keep doing this series. Let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Do follow us on our social media pages. If you didn't get the um, handles earlier, the link will be in the description below as well. But yeah, thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with another video, and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks.